All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Sorry for the delay. I was out doing an 1800 nautical mile delivery, as you can see in my last video. However, today we're back. We're cruising, we're bruising, we're shaking, we're baking. And today I'm gonna teach you how to actually shop for a sailboat in a timely and cost-effective manner. Now you have no idea how many people send me boat listings on a daily basis. Hey, Chris, what do you think of this boat? Well, George, I actually don't think anything about that boat, and I'm gonna explain to you exactly why, and then show you how to properly search for a new to you, fancy dancy used sailboat. So let's get rolling and head over to the used sailboat market. Have I gone mad? Afraid so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost effective manner possible, as well as you can come sailing with me on one of my numerous deliveries throughout the year. And just like magic, here we are. We're over on Yacht World. Haven't done anything yet except I've just searched sailboats and I put in a budget. Now, just for the purpose of this video, 50 to 150K doesn't really matter for this video. However, you must keep in mind when searching for used sailboats for yourself, this is an absolute war. It's a minefield out here of disaster. And if you're not careful, you're going to make a very, very costly mistake. Now, we can look at any YouTube channel out there. They've all made the same mistakes. They've all bought, most of them, boats that needed far, far too much work. They spent way longer than they thought doing the work, and they've actually done very little sailing. Even if you look at YouTubers that people think have really done a lot of miles, there's like Sailing Umas out there. I think they have 25,000 nautical miles sailed. I do that in a year. Uh, doesn't make me any better than them. But the point is when you buy boats that need a lot of work, that's exactly what you're going to be doing. You're going to be sitting, you're happy behind in a boatyard somewhere, fixing a boat. Our goal is not to fix vessels in tropical locations. Our goal is to sail and enjoy sailing and everything travel has to offer out there. So keep in mind, this is an absolute war when we're searching for used sailboats. Go to Yacht World, boom, sailboats, budget. Put it in right there. Do price low to high. Now also remember, what kind of sailing is it you're actually going to do? It's time to be realistic with yourself. Take off the rose colored glasses and get rid of your delusions of grandeur. What type of sailing are you actually going to be doing? 99% of people, coastal cruise and island hop. Myself, that is by far the most enjoyable type of sailing for me. So keep that in mind. If you have zero experience and you're 65 years old, you doing a circumnavigation highly unlikely, but you might do it. And if that's actually your goal, then fantastic. Either way, we need to buy the proper vessel that we can grow into that's going to feed our needs in the long run and a vessel that we're not going to grow out of. Now, once you've got those things figured out, boom, we're over on Yacht World. We're cruising, we're shaking, we're baking. Now, let's say I'm looking for an island hopper, right? I'm single guy, my budget's 50K. I'm trying to find myself a nice little island hopper. So I'm cruising around. Now, myself, I know what kind of boats I like. I know what kind of boats I don't like. I've sailed most boats out there, or a lot of them, I should say. And there's some boats I despise, some boats I really, really enjoy being on, especially my goals, coastal cruising and island hopping. So I'm cruising along here. What I'm trying to get myself is a nice little dual helm vessel with a swim platform, nice wide open cockpit, because I'm gonna be in the Caribbean, island hopping. That's where I'm gonna spend most of my time. Now, we're cruising right along here. You're going to notice a lot of price drops. The boat market's tanking. These are all trash cans of vessels so far. And we're moving right along. We're just trying to find something worth a hoot here to look at so we can get on to our next lesson. Now, if I'm on an absolute budget, I'm trying to get as new as possible. I myself, I like dual helm vessels, especially in the Caribbean. They offer far too many benefits to ever think about possibly going to a single helm vessel, so we're not going to do it. And as we cruise along here, we're shaking, we're baking, we're just gonna jump up in price here so we can actually get to some good boats. Maybe, possibly. Let's adjust our price here. Let's do 100K. 
just to make this easier for the video. Here we go. Price low to high. Boom. Nader Swan from 1971. Absolutely not. All right. We got a dual helm right there. It's too small. The 30.1 is far too small of a vessel. So let's keep on going. We got the Dexalon Genoa, but we can basically pick any of these. And the same things are going to apply to any boat that you think about buying. So let's say my budget's 100 grand now. I'm cruising. Just looking for a culprit here. Passed a lot of nice boats so far, but I've got something in mind that I'm thinking of here that I'd like to show you. If, of course, I can ever find one of them. Now, here's a Cyclades 39. All right, we're cruising. Now, it's a 2008. What does that mean? So I'm looking at this. All I'm doing on this boat listing, I'm just if I'm brand new to boat shopping, I'm just looking at the model. That's all that I'm doing. So now I see I got a dual helm. I've got a swim. It's the sugar scoop with a walk through transom. I prefer a swim platform. So this would not work for me. So I don't need to keep looking at this boat listing. There's no reason to. All it's going to do is try to get me to buy this boat. That's not what I'm doing. When I'm looking at boat listings, I'm looking for reasons not to buy the boat. Now here's a 2008 Oceanus 37. Maybe it doesn't want to load. All right. We're just going to keep on moving there since that won't load. Dun, dun, dun. And man, boat market not looking stellar right now with good boats. Cruising right along. Nothing yet. Nothing worth a hoot. Here we go. And as you know, Sun Odyssey 389. Now, this has dual helms. It's got the swim platform versus the sugar scoop. That's what I like. Nice wide open cockpit. Boom. Again, all I'm doing, I'm just looking at this boat listing to get an idea of the model of the vessel. Now, once I find a boat like this one that I think might work for myself, my very next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sailboat data. Why am I doing that? Let me show you. Here we are, sailboat data. Now, it gives me the layouts most of the time for the boat. So it comes in a three cabin as well as a two cabin. Now I want a two cabin. So far, this boat's looking good for my needs. I go right down here. I'm looking at length of waterline versus length overall. What am I looking for there? Well, in the world of sailboats, when you go to marinas, you pay for this. You pay for your length overall. Now, I like my length at the waterline. This is my living space on a vessel my length of the waterline and my beam. That's going to be my livable space down below on a monohull. So I want these two numbers ideally to be less than a five foot difference. If I can get it under three, that's amazing. And there's a lot of newer boats out there that are under three, but at maximum, I'm really going to go for a boat. It's got a less than five foot discrepancy right here. Now I can scroll right down on sailboat data. I can figure out some other things. I can figure out how much fuel does it actually carry? That's going to come into play depending on how long of distances I'm going to be sailing. What size engine? A 29 horsepower. So I know the boat is not fast, not under motor. It's not fast at all. And she's got 53 gallons of water. Now, the very first thing people go, oh my God, I need a water maker. Stop it. Stop the madness. You don't. You haven't sailed very much, most likely. At least that's most of my clients. And I'm here to tell you, don't buy anything for your new to you fancy dancy used sailboat until you've been on it for two or three months. So you can at least figure out some of your basic needs before you go dumping money into the boat on upgrades. Trust me, no matter what boat you buy, there's going to be things to replace and fix just to make it comfortable out there in the ocean or coastal cruising and island hopping. Now, scrolling right along, this is an X charter. It's a 2017, so I don't have to think much about this. Since it's 2017, it probably has some hurricane damage. And look, here it is. Boom. Vessel sustained some hurricane damage in Hurricane Irma. That's fine. I don't really care. I'm going to call these guys before I even think any more about this boat. I'm all done right there. I'm going to call these guys. I'm going to ask them for the hurricane damage report. They're going to send that to me. I'm going to take a look at it. Now, this boat has already been repaired to manufacturer's standards, and it's been put back into the fleet. That, for me, tells me the boat is safe to sail. They've basically risked their entire financial future as a company on this boat being safe, coastal cruising and island hopping. That's why it was put back into the fleet. So I'm not concerned about that. All I want to see is what kind of damage did it sustain? 
Might have just had a demasting. That's not a big deal. This is the two cabin version as well, and that's fantastic. So if I look at the price, 105,000. Now, why are X charters such a good deal? Let me show you. Now, if I pop right on over in Yacht World, just search the Juno 389, price low to high. What am I going to see? These are X charters right here at the top. These ones are all X charters, 100K up to 115. Right when you step into a privately owned vessel, it's $161,000, ladies and gents, 163, 180K up to 200K. And this is older. 2019, 265, 2017. Here'd be a comparable one. Vancouver, British Columbia for a smooth 100K more. Fantastic. Not today, ladies and gents. I don't care what was done to this boat. For the 100K price difference, I can do whatever I want to to this boat. I can fully outfit it for off grid, whatever it is I want to do over the next six months to a year. My initial purchase is just for the foundation of my sailboat, not my sailing future. You must understand that. When you're buying a boat, stop spending a bunch of money buying a boat that has quote unquote already been outfitted. It's not a wise use of your money. Whatever has been put on that boat, it's been used most likely for several years, but you're going to pay a premium because it's already installed. Here's an island packet from 1993. I'm going to guess this guy's probably done some work at some point. Maybe he'll tell us, maybe he won't. Uh, so it's got a new power system, 2021. That's a couple years old already. So this guy's done a few things in 2021, but that this does not, this is not worth paying any premium for. Those are things that just should have been done to the boat anyway. And every time you're going through a listing, you're going to see this stuff. Sales rigging in a canvas. Not every time. If they're a decent broker, they'll tell you. So new chain plates, 2021. Sales reinforced. You should have just bought new sales. You went cheap there. You reinforced them. Just buy new sales. It's the foundation of your sailing future. That right there makes me not want this boat already. And he's not telling you anything. This boat has a oh, microwave. Ooh, fancy. Microwaves are like $35, you absolute potato for brains. Um, you already said new power system. And this is all just basic things that should be on your boat anyway. None of this is worth any kind of a premium. None of this. So you can look at some of the work they've done in 2021. It's really not much. New standing rigging, but he doesn't tell you when. It's a 1993. If you had standing rigging done in 2005 or 2010, you're about time and due for that again. So stop focusing on the stupid add-ons on these sailboats that are not worth your time. You're better off upgrading the boat yourself when you determine what your needs are. You see all these YouTubers with these lithium batteries and water makers and all this bullshit. And the reality is you might find that you don't need 90% of that stuff once you're actually sailing. Again, depending on what type of sailing you're going to be doing. Now, if we go and we start looking, let's look at some older boats here. Let's try to find something a bit older so I can explain a bit better what I'm referring to. Now we're going up in price, so it's usually difficult. So here's a, let's see here. It's going to do that Catalina, but no thank you. Can't stand Catalinas. Um, let's see. No good culprits so far. So here's a 2004 423. The reason I'm pulling it up, it's a 2004. That means it's 20 years old. Now this boat, if it hasn't already had it, it's going to require a complete refit. At 20 years old, you should be replacing the sails, the standing rigging, the running rigging. The engine should probably have an overhaul at that point. The chain should have been replaced, all the seals. There's a ton of stuff that should have been done on this boat. Now we're going to scroll down. We're going to see if he actually tells us anything. No, he doesn't tell us anything. So when somebody sends me a boat listing like this, it tells me absolutely nothing. All I can see is a make, a model, and a price. That's all it's telling me. It's not, none of this stuff matters. None of this nonsense matters. This is all stock stuff that just comes on the boat. And then down here in other details, this is all just normal stuff. Oh, it's got a lazy bag. Of course it does, you absolute idiot. They all do if they've got a stack pack, you dumb shit. So don't waste your time on boats like this. If you like this particular model in Oceanus 423, when you find them, instantly just call the broker. Just instantly make a phone call. There's no reason to even think any longer about that boat. They didn't tell you anything. 
Now, when you make that phone call, there are some questions that you have got to ask the broker, and here they are. Now, first up, you need to understand everything on a sailboat has a life span. Yes, ladies and gents, a lifespan. Things don't last forever, especially not at sea. So our first question, how old is the standing rigging? Now, standing rigging generally lasts somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 years. That's when your insurance company is going to require you to replace it. So regardless of if they say it is good or it's been inspected, does not matter. If it is 15 years old, you need to understand that right when you buy that boat in the near future, if it's a 40 footer, you're going to have to drop five or six thousand dollars on new standing rigging if your insurance company doesn't require it right out of the gate. Next up, we've got sales. Now your sales last somewhere in the neighborhood of five to eight years, depending on use, regardless of if Mr. Broker tells you the boat is never used and blah, blah, blah. That's actually worse for your vessel. The less a vessel is used, the more issues it tends to have. You want boats that are actually being used and being taken care of. You don't want boats that have been sitting on the hard for a year or two or boats that really are sailed for two weekends out of the year. You're just going to find when you buy that boat and you take it offshore, you take it a long passage, a whole bunch of things are going to break on the boat because it's just never used. It's just what happens. So sales five to eight years. Now, if those sales are eight years old or seven years old or 10 years old, guess what? You're going to step instantly into about $6,000 for a pair of sales on your average 40 foot vessel. I don't want you to eat that cost right when you buy the boat. So when we're making an offer, we need to adjust our offer based on the things it needs. Now, if we're looking at a boat and it needs new standing rigging and new sales, guess what? We have to deduct $11,000 from our offer because right when we buy that boat, we have to get the standing rigging and sales completed. So remember, two foundational, very, very important questions. How old is the standing rigging and how old are the sales? Next up, ladies and gents, how is the running rigging on the vessel? Now to completely redo your running rigging, it's going to run you somewhere three or $4,000, depending on if you do it yourself or have somebody else do it for you. If the running rigging is 15 years old, guess what? You're going to have to replace it because what will happen, those lines are going to snap when you're at sea and they will always snap at the worst time. So next up, running rigging. You want to replace your running rigging every three years, if not before that. These lines are always getting chafed. They will snap. Better to be up on it than have a disaster when you're out there sailing. So you're standing rigging. You're looking for it to be new within the last three years or else you're going to bite another $3,000 bill right out of the gate. Up next, do they have a previous or recent survey? Now, this isn't going to help you much, but it's going to give you a very good general idea of how well the vessel has been taken care of throughout the life of the vessel. If they had a survey done a few years ago, no, it doesn't supplement you doing a survey, but gives you an idea of what the condition of the boat was at that time and whatever issues were on there. If they still haven't been replaced three years later when you're thinking about buying it, guess what? Don't buy the boat because it's a dumpster and the guy doesn't take care of it. So make sure to ask, do you have a recent survey? And may I have a copy of it, please? And last but not least, also keep in mind, all of your miscellaneous things on a boat are very, very expensive. So an EPIRB, that's going to run you probably a thousand dollars. If you have to get yourself a dinghy, that's a few thousand dollars. An outboard, that's a couple thousand dollars. All the safety equipment on board, life rafts flares, flare guns, all of those things really add up very, very quickly. So when you're calling the broker on a boat that you're interested in, make sure that you ask about those things. Do they have them or do they not have them on board? That way you can understand your actual initial purchase price when out there shopping. So in the future, instead of just looking at boats and being all romantic about what it says that it lists, just instantly call the broker. Find out these questions I'm asking you and or I'm telling you to ask them. And then what you should do is you should fill out my spreadsheet. Now, here's my spreadsheet. So I've got some vessels on here I was previously looking at for somebody. So we're just going to go ahead and delete this really, really quick. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is going to make much, much more sense in about two seconds. This spreadsheet is incredibly important and it's going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars. 
Now, let's say that I'm looking at a Genot 39i. Let's say the list price for this boat is $125,000. Boom. Not $12,000. $125,000. How do I miss a zero? All right, $125,000. Now, I call up the broker and I find out, okay, I need to get new sales. I'm looking about six grand on sales. My standing rigging needs to be replaced. I'm looking about five grand. Let's say my running rigging needs to be replaced as well. Looking at another $3,000, needs a bottom job. There's another few grand. Boom, it doesn't have a dinghy. I know I'm gonna have to buy a dinghy and an outboard, so now I'm gonna do it for like six grand. Everything else is wonderful. It's got an engine. The engine's in great shape. It's got a life raft, chain, EPIRB, all those wonderful things. I'm scrolling down. It's got autopilot. Let's say it's got a water maker, generator. It's got all these amazing things on the boat already, so I don't have to, uh, you know, do much there. Then I scroll on down here at the bottom and look, my Genoa 39i is $148,000. Even though it's list price up here for the vessel, it's only listed at $125,000. If you just call them up and you add up all the things that are on my spreadsheet, you ask the basic questions I'm saying, at the end, you're going to get yourself a reasonable, realistic cost for the vessel. That's not a $125,000 Juno 39i. That's a $148,000 Juno 39i. Now I can go and I can compare it to other 39i's out there on the market. It's very, very important to get yourself this spreadsheet. Now you're probably asking, Chris, where the world do I get the spreadsheet? Well, you get it right here. You fly right on over to Chasing Latitudes. You click on the consulting tab at the top, you scroll down, there it is. I have my brand new ebook as well as the spreadsheet is in the ebook on page three. It's gonna tell you everything you need to know in order to properly shop for a used sailboat in the future and not waste a ridiculous amount of your time. So I've been making YouTube videos for, uh, like I said, about three years now, and I have somewhere around 900 or 1,000 videos on my YouTube channel. And it came to my attention just a week or so ago that I almost never, ever talk about myself. There is not a single video on my channel dedicated to myself or who I am or anything because I'm not a YouTube vlogger. And so over these next few videos, at the beginning of my video, I'm gonna kind of break down exactly who I am and what it is that I actually do for a living. I am not a full-time YouTuber. YouTube is not my main job. I'm a delivery captain who happens to make YouTube videos. And I think out there in the world of uh, social media sailing, a lot of people, I think are confused and it's my fault because I've just never really talked about myself. I have a, a hard time talking about myself and what it is I do just because I think it's uh, a bit narcissistic to be uh, constantly talking about myself. So it's something I never ever do. And you can kind of see that on my YouTube channel. There's never really, there's not a single video talking about myself really. Uh, and who I am and how I got all my experience and what it is I actually do. So I think I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. Now, I am a delivery captain. That is what I do full time and it is how I make a living. So what that means is that on any given month throughout the year, I will sail somewhere in the neighborhood around 2,000 to 4,000 nautical miles, depending on my deliveries for that particular month. Now this gives me a unique opportunity to do a lot of things. Number one, I get a ton of actual sailing miles under my belt every single month and my nautical miles travel just keeps growing because again, it's what I do for a living. This also allows me to get on a wide variety of sailboats, more than just about anyone else. Because again, everyone is buying a different vessel. They need to sail them in different conditions from different parts of the world back to their home port. So this gives me again, another unique perspective of actually being able to spend a couple of weeks on a wide variety of sailboats throughout the year, giving me a pretty good idea of a huge variety of boats, how they're gonna handle, how they are laid out, 
how user friendly they will be for new sales versus experienced sailors and so on. So it gives me a really, really good inside look at a lot of these vessels, which is how I can make so many videos talking about hundreds of different vessels. I've actually sailed them thousands of miles on these deliveries and I can share that information with you 100% free here on YouTube. Now, in addition to being a full-time delivery captain, I am also a sailboat purchasing consultant. So what in the world does that mean? Well, when it comes to buying yourself a new to you, fancy dancy used sailboat, there are a million pitfalls, hurdles involved in the buying process. My goal as a sailboat buying consultant is to help you avoid them all and walk you through every step of buying a used sailboat from start to finish. Whether you are a complete novice on a sailboat and have never stepped foot on a sailboat or you're an experienced sailor out there, but you're buying a boat and you're not 100% sure what to get. So as a sailboat buying consultant, I walk you through every single step of the process, all the way from the very beginning of knowing absolutely nothing about sailboats. So we will determine together over time what sailboat is gonna work the best for you and your needs, not my needs, and not the sailboats that I like, but getting you the right vessel that is going to work for you. Then from there, we will go on to figure out the correct offer price based on the current market conditions for that vessel. We're gonna go ahead, determine offers. We're gonna set up surveys. We're gonna get the survey back. We're gonna readjust our offer. We're gonna get your insurance handled, set up your delivery, get your first year of sailing planned out for you so it's really nice, comfortable, and easy, and make things a seamless transition from living on land to living on a sailboat. Now, a lot of people have no idea what is actually involved in a sailboat, and it is nothing like buying a used car. You don't get to run around and test out different sailboats and go and sail them in the ocean. You can't do that on sailboats for the most part. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't get to test drive these things. So we've got to get the correct surveyor, make sure we go in depth on the survey, get our offer adjusted based on what comes back on the survey. We then have to go, we have to get you insurance, get you set up with marinas, plan your routes out for your first year. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff involved in buying a used sailboat. Now, this is why I generally like to work with people as long as possible. So if I work with you for a year or more before we actually buy a sailboat for you, that's fantastic. We can really make sure that we have things dialed in properly so that you don't wind up buying the wrong boat and then just traveling around the world, fixing your boat in tropical locations only to sell it just a couple of years later. That is no fun for anyone involved. And I hate seeing people give up on sailing because they purchased the wrong sailboat. Now, we can see this play out all over YouTube all of the time. People buy the wrong boat, then they become a little bit successful, get themselves a totally different boat. But the whole time they were on that wrong boat, they were telling you how great that wrong boat was until they actually had some money and then they just went and bought a catamaran because that happens a lot. And I'm super happy for those guys, pumped for them. But my goal is avoiding that whole first five-year scenario of you buying the wrong sailboat. So being a sailboat buying consulting also gives me another unique insight into the world of purchasing a used sailboat. Now, over the last few years, I have helped somewhere around 100 different people buy their sailboat, whether it was their first sailboat or their 10th sailboat. So again, this has given me a very unique inside perspective into the actual used sailboat market over the last several years. And I've been involved in the purchase of so many sailboats from start to finish as a sailboat buying consultant that I've got a really, really unique perspective on it. And because I also have a YouTube presence, this gives me a huge audience. So I have a much larger audience than your typical broker. And I'll be involved in more boat deals throughout the year than most brokers out there because I have a huge audience on YouTube and I'm helping hundreds of people buy sailboats, just around a hundred or something in the last few years. So not hundreds, but you know what I mean. And that's an absolute ton of sailboat purchases to be involved in.
So my videos are based off of what I'm actually doing for a living. This is what I'm seeing day to day, week to week, and month to month firsthand in the world of sailing. So this isn't some half cocked, I need YouTube views marketing gimmick. I get no benefit from you saving money and buying yourself a boat for less money. That in no way benefits me at all financially. I don't make money off of you buying a sailboat for more money or less money. My goal is always just to save you as much money as possible. My goal is not to get you to spend more money. So if you watch my videos and pay attention and take some of my advice and you can save some money, that's fantastic. That costs me nothing to do other than time making these YouTube videos to help you. But I get no financial benefit in a random YouTuber watching, saving his money and getting the right boat for less money. This isn't some little gimmick. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm simply sharing with you what I'm seeing every single day of my life based off of what I do for a living. Now, I don't do YouTube for a living. I make these videos simply to help other people get on the water. I don't do it for a living. People often go, oh, look, you have less subscribers. Of course I have less subscribers. My audience is a very specific audience and it's people looking to buy a used sailboat. I'm not a sailing vlogger. I don't travel around on a boat, pointing the camera at myself and showing you white sand beaches and uh, making things dramatic that are not dramatic. I'm a delivery captain and a sailboat buying consultant that happens to make YouTube videos. If you want to watch my videos and take some tips and you can save yourself money, then that helps me just feel better as a human being, knowing that I'm helping other people in one way or another get out there on the water. Now, with being a delivery captain, this also gives me a huge opportunity to invite other people to come sailing with me all over the world on these deliveries. On any given month, I've got one or two deliveries somewhere in the world sailing 2,000 miles or more, generally speaking. Most of my trips are a week or two long. The average is about two weeks and about 2,500 nautical miles. That's kind of my average every month for uh, doing my deliveries. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little bit less. But because I have that opportunity, I'm also able to offer my members the ability to come and sail with me. And it costs them nothing except their travel and their food. That's it. So how do you come sailing with me? Now, a lot of people ask me that question as well, and it's really, really simple. All you have to do is go over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for consulting. Now, the consulting members, they always get first crack at these deliveries, and the deliveries generally fill up fast, but because everybody has their own lives and stuff, there's almost always room on all of my deliveries to get someone on the boat and come sail with me. Now, if you compare that cost to something else in the world of sailing, the only way for the average individual to get on a sailboat is usually to run out and charter a sailboat somewhere in a tropical location. That's going to generally run you about $5,000. If you're not experienced, the charter company is going to make you hire a captain for that week that you're on the boat. And now you're going to beat about $7,000 for a week of sailing on a sailboat and trying to learn how to sail. You can do that right through me for a thousand bucks super super simple because i'm not in it for the money i'm just trying to get you guys on the water so if you're ever interested in coming sailing with me that's how you do it you sign up for consulting i get you over on the members area we start chatting and you come sailing with me on a delivery i have numerous people on my members area that have no desire to ever buy a sailboat they just want to come sailing with me a couple times a year three or four times a year, whatever works in their schedule. And once you're a consulting member, you have the opportunity to do that. So again, my entire goal with my whole YouTube channel, it's just to get people on the water. Now, because I'm a delivery captain and because I can take so many people sailing, I have a huge insight into the world of the used sailboat market. Also being a sailboat buying consultant, I am part of hundreds of deals on any given year. It's generally right around 100 boat deals a year that I'm a part of. So I'm dealing with numerous different vessels in numerous different locations, hundreds of different brokers um, and things like that. So I have a, a giant, giant insight into the world of sailing, how to get on the water, how to learn how to sail, 
how to buy a boat, and how to do all of those things in the most cost-effective way possible. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to our website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now, I do offer full consulting over here. Now, there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one-on-one, -on -one, one-time consult. It's on sale right now. It's only $100. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one-on-one -on -one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth or we can go over several boats whatever it is you need you can grab the one-time consult now if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out you're trying to determine like offer prices things like that you can grab a consulting package and this will be three different consults so we can go over multiple boats we can touch back and forth lifetime access to the members area all of those good things this is currently on sale it's only 375 and then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's gonna work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. That way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy. We can get you out on boats. We can look at some things. We can really, really get in depth and narrow down your search. We'll come up with offer prices. We'll go over the survey together, reduction in our prices, sea trials, all kinds of stuff. That's where you want the 24 seven consulting package. If you're really, really serious about getting on the water. Also something that helps is my spreadsheet. Now, you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only ten dollars so i published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago it was the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time so you also get that it's only ten dollars so over my web suit site fantastic place to go um i've got a little bit of apparel up here stuff like that but again what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you so head on our website grab a consulting package let's get you over in the members area let's get started